My father, Jamie Howard, was a professor here at CSU for 32 years, and he was an artist for a total of 52 years. Um, when he was young, he lived in Germany and Europe after the war because my grandfather was the chief of monuments, fine arts, and archives, which is what the monuments men became. Uh, during the war, he was a colonel, and he didn't know that that was being formed. But he went to Harvard, Yale, and Cornell for art history. So he was like an expert in art history, but he was busy doing colonel things. Um, <laughs> and so after the war, he found that that was formed, and he wanted to be a part of it then. And so he became the chief of monuments and archives. And at that time, it was about recovering the works that were stolen and trying to put them back to their rightful owners and all kinds of things like that. So they would travel around Europe and try to find these caches of Nazi stolen work. Yeah. And like the salt mines was a famous like finding that they did. And my father was actually there with them when that happened. He was a four-year-old, you know, Jamie Howard looking at a Rembrandt to, in a salt mine. Yeah. yeah. So that uh, inspired him seeing all the work from history firsthand, and then also since they lived in Germany, they met a lot of German expressionist artists, and they were friends of the family. And my family bought wow. work from them. Yeah. So that they, so that was always around the house. So he saw a lot of German work. Um, so, in 1988, he wrote this little book here. Jamie did. Yeah, Jamie wrote the book, and it ties all of his work together in a narrative, which is something I've never heard of an artist doing. So, in the story, um, it's set in this imaginary place called Somerville, and it's a really beautiful place. And I think that just my theory is that he created this ideal landscape based on what he saw of Europe after the war, but it's, it's kind of like a place where none of that had happened. Like it still remained beautiful. It's his answer to what he saw the Nazis destroy and all that. Right, sort of redoing that. So, yeah. Yeah, so each character in Somerville does different paintings. Yeah, that's, well, one character does the watercolors of Somerville and another character does the sculptures, another character is the oil painter, and then another character is writing this all down, what's happening. And there's a wedding that's about to take place in this island, there are many families, and they all expect this one couple to get together and get married, but he's not in love with her, but he's in love with her sister, who's the one that paints the watercolors. So they run away together and they actually hide out in this, to this tower where the sculptor lives and works. Okay. And they call it the Onion, because of the Onion Dome. Yeah. And so all the sculptures that you see that my father created are in that tower, because that's where the sculptor worked. Okay. And there's a blue moth on the spire, and that's the symbol of the architect of the island. Um, other things happen on the island, like they race sailboats, they have hot air balloon races. Huh? And so in these two, these, all the sailboats are racing in this direction. But this one has decided to turn around and go his own way. Sometimes you have to go your own way. Yeah. When everybody's going, you have to go against the grain. Yeah. And for each thing that he did, he also created a new method of doing it. So like you won't see watercolors done this way with the precision and the care that he took. And he also did an interesting method where he puts the paint on and then rinses it off. So the paint actually more stains the paper than actually painting the watercolor paper. Really? So that creates, he's able to build up layers and things like that. It's really time consuming. Yeah. I think that's why we haven't seen many people use that method. Yeah, it has a whole different look. It really looks almost like a print more than a watercolor. Yeah, so when you arrive on, at Somerville, they throw these balloons out of the window, and that's to represent their happiness, that they're, they're happy that you're here and you've come to visit Somerville and welcome. So you see these balloons fly out of these windows, and that's what that means. Yeah. And this whole picture is called the cat. And there's a cat in this corner. <laughs> right. Isn't that hilarious? Because you're looking all around at all yeah, this. Yeah, that's right. Where's the don't cat? Even that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. This is an interesting painting that I recently acquired for the collection. Uh huh. Um, she was the biographer of Carson McCullers. That's Virginia Carr. Yeah. So I know yeah, Virginia. Oh, yeah. Well, you went to school. Yeah, she's yeah. a good friend of the family. Yeah. So her daughter actually contacted me and said that she didn't have space for this painting in her anymore and so she'd like to donate it to a collection. She said maybe the Carson McCullers collection. Right. I said, well, they might not want it because it's not directly Carson McCullers right. object. But I have a collection of my father's work 
and we actually have a show at CSU coming up where your mother taught, so it works perfectly. So I drove to Dallas, Texas to pick this up. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. You should see the looks you get walking through a hotel lobby, though, carrying something this large wrapped up. Oh, I'll bet. Everybody wants to know what you got. Yeah, <laughs> what, what are you up to? Yeah. How about that? And it came with all these wonderful pictures of him working on it with her there. Yeah, is that a uh, Virginia mm -hmm. uh, picture? Yeah, look. Virginia yeah. and my father. Oh, wow, there she is, yeah. How about that? Oh, that's great. Well, you know, I'm surprised at the the colors house because uh, actually Virginia made Carson hot again in the mm -hmm. 70s. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we knew her well. Yeah, I, I had her briefly as a professor too. English, right? Yeah, English, yeah. yeah. I was so an English major back then. She got her um, PhD and this was his gift to her. Oh, how nice. In yeah. celebration of that. Yeah. Well, some of these paintings are people that are directly in the story, but some of them can just be explained as paintings that the painter in the story just created. Oh, I got you. So this is a painting where she's been given this gift of butterflies in a box from her lover. Uh -huh. And remember the balloons we see, so I think that represents their happiness. Right, right. And she's opened the lid and they've gone everywhere. I see. Yeah, that's great. And there are moths all around this island. And each family has a little inkwell that they put out by an open window and they mix food coloring and uh, sugar and water to attract the moths and they come and each family has a certain color that they mix. So that the more a certain moth comes and visits this family, the more they start to turn that color. So you right. can tell when you see one flying around which family they are friends of the most. Yeah, cool. Now this painting is the largest oil painting that he ever did. And I don't think this has ever been an exhibition until now. Really? Yeah. But this painting is directly in the story where she is the original intended bride. And this is actually her nurse who took care of her when she was young. She's gone a little crazy from all this stress. Mm -hmm. So she has to take care of her again. So this was supposed to be a wedding portrait. It was commissioned by the family. It was paid for. So the painter shows up with all of his paint brushes and paints and a stretch canvas and it's all been paid for it's all ready to go but there's no couple so somebody has to stand in the portrait so that's what this is it's, she and her nurse. it's a wedding portrait but it's not a wedding portrait at all at the same time and he had a lot of these personal objects that are in the painting like the candlesticks were at his house this silver compote was something he had and this chair so one day I hope to have those things in a glass vitrine beside the painting so you can see what they look like in the real world versus this alternate reality. Cool, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And you'd also have, in traditional wedding portraits, one candle would be lit to symbolize that Christ is in the room and he approves of the union. Mm -hmm. But here, there's no union, so Christ is in the room and he approves of it not working out with the original couple. So he's taken a theme that's common in art history and flipped it over. I see. Why wow, you'd have to know a lot of art history to know that. Which he did, because he had a double master's art and art history, and that's why he actually came here, because they were starting the art department. Right. And they needed somebody that could teach a lot of the different things. And he could do art history, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's usually you're just a scholar, or you make things, right. but he could do all of it. That was back in the early days. Yeah. 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 And see, there's a moth drinking out of the compote there. And he painted a watercolor within a painting. Mm -hmm. And then he painted this other picture in the other room. I see. And he told me that he envisioned what the entire thing's supposed to look like, but that's all you'll ever see of it, because you never completely share everything that you have on the inside with everyone. Okay. So in this painting, these two ladies, they're gossip queens in, the t in Somerville, and they're protesting this whole thing that's happening. So the symbol for her family are these moths, these colorful moths, and the symbol for the other lady are these red balloons. Yeah. And so they have these picket signs, and something's gotten in her friend's eye, and she's helping her get it out. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What's interesting is use of colors and his use of... Um, there's a method in the computer called rotoscoping, which when you look at rotoscope things, it looks like the hair looks like that when you look at a picture of somebody that's been rotoscoped. Right. And except he's done, he's taken a step further where he switched the colors but kept the correct values. But this kind of thing is something that a computer created 20 years after my father envisioned it, worked it out in his so mind. It's sort of like a, uh, a uh, rotoscoping only organic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool, yeah, yeah. 
Now in this one, my grandfather told my father a long time ago, have nothing to do with a woman who needs a ride, <laughs> especially if she knits, uh -huh. because she'll knit you up and you won't be able to go anywhere. <laughs> so this is what's happened here. She's knit him up because he's giving her a pick-a-back ride. Okay. And now he's, he's trapped. I see. And this is one of the last paintings he did. And so you can see how his style changed over the years, especially from the first Virginia yeah. car, 1970, yeah. around there. His style changed to here in around 2010, 2011, when he did this. So do you know who's in the painting? I don't. It was somebody that came to the studio and stood for it. Okay. And I can't remember their name or much about them. It's very interesting how he just suggests with almost shadows the figure. Yeah. Well, he would do detail in areas where he wanted you to focus more, and he'd leave other things not so detailed so you wouldn't be distracted by like his hands down there and things. And the monoprints are a series that he did around the 80s. He started the first one in 1984 which is that one there of Maureen Rosenbaum, a great friend of his. And she okay. was a singer and she taught singing and she's a wonderful lady so he did this monoprint of her and he gave her a flower in there. Here, they weren't expecting me to be here this entire exhibition, the yeah. whole month. And I said no I want to be here so that I can explain these things to people because once you learn the stories behind them you have more of a connection with them. You really do enjoyment of the, of the work a lot more if you sort of know what the artist's intent even if you take yeah. something different away. That's true. Yeah. And he meant for these things to be also they could be viewed as work alone from from the narrative. Yeah. Just a work of art by itself or it can be a part of this larger narrative.